Hi everyone and welcome back to this series on animating a door in Blender. In the previous episode we went through how to add keyframes to our door. Now we're going to start looking at how to fine tune it by looking at our reference and paying attention to the tiny details. Let's get to it. So yeah, so we've been through a few of the different motion types. Now let's just grab our key again and we're going to set these both to free again. And now if I do something drastic with these tangents like this and then we'll grab this one and also set these to free and just push them up like that and like that really go wacky with this uh, free and free but um but um um yeah like that now if we hit play Okay, so that <clears throat> is the principle of the bouncing ball in that the timing and spacing that is going on here is being adjusted by the curve. So if we make this bigger so you can see it. So if we go frame by frame, which is left arrow and right arrow on your keyboard, <clears throat> you can see how the jaw jumps. So it's going Slowly, 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 fast, 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 and then slowly, 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 and then fast, 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 and then slowly, slowly, fast, 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 and it's that it's that bouncing ball principle. If if you were to look at a bouncing ball in with ghosting turning on or motion trail turned on, you would see this bouncing effect in the trail, and and that's the principle of the bouncing ball. We can apply to everything to think about weight and timing. So when you're thinking about weight and spacing and timing, these are the principles of animation that are at play in and animations always. <clears throat> Regardless of what it is, there's always some form of weight, spacing and timing, um, unless it's a really bad animation. <clears throat> like Coco Melon, if anyone has watched that. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the bouncing happening here. What we're gonna do is just get rid of all of this and go back to, uh, <clears throat> if we just like we did before, um, just deselect everything and then just do. If you want to deselect, it's control drag with the mouse, hit A on the keyboard, and everything's selected now. And let's go to right click, easing type, we'll just do automatic easing, hit uh, Bezier interpolation mode. None of this is working. Why is this not working? Um, handle types. Uh, automatic. There we go. And then go to interpolation mode, Spezier, and then easing type, automatic. Cool. So we're back to kind of where we were before. So now let's play around with this and just kind of smoothen out our curve. So the general rule of thumb is when working with animation, <clears throat> you always want to have a nice smooth motion, smooth arc of motion. Um, and to do that, I'm just going to play around with this here with these tangents just to kind of smooth into each other. And we just grab that, drag that, oh, just that one. Drag that out. Just, just make that a little bit softer there. Okay, so it goes fast and then want it to slow into the end there. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to, to move this up around, to move the actual keys around. You can left click on it and just drag it around, which is okay, but it can also be quite annoying because it's not accurately staying on one axis. And so a similar thing to what we did before, if you middle mouse, if you hold shift, middle mouse, no, uh, what is it? Uh, shift middle mouse, uh, alt middle mouse, shift, oh, hold shift and it slowly drags around. That slows it down. And then the other option is if you hold control, where is it? Uh, nope. Oh, that's cool. Um, I just want to drag on one axis. Uh, not context menu. We want to drag. Oh, if you hold Y, <clears throat> if you press Y, it locks to the Y axis. 
which is cool. <clears throat> if you press X, locks to the X axis, which is also cool. I'm just going to drag this out and then go up a bit, go over a bit. And I'm just going to drag that there. So it kind of, it comes fast in and then slows out a bit. Might just move this one. Oh. Yeah, a little bit more like that. And this one a bit more like that. And then this one we could probably drag over there a bit more. <clears throat> okay, so let's have a look at that. So it slowly comes in. Now, as cool as this now looks, we've got a nice bit of animation on our door where it's coming out fast and slowing down. It's not really matched up to our reference footage. <clears throat> so we can go deeper into this and really play around with these keys, um, which we'll do quite quickly now. So if we just go for it. So my door is opening a bit faster here, and that's because we don't start as open as his. So we can take this first key and just open, start it from open a bit more. So you can either drag it here or you just adjust it here so it starts a little bit more open there <clears throat> and now we hit play okay now we can see as well as mine slowing down a little bit too early so the door would be more open at this point <clears throat> So what we can do is just drag with Y again, just the Y axis, and let's just drag this a little bit more down to keep that speed going a bit more there. Okay, and that last bit as well where he slows down, I think my door's a little bit late here, so let's just bring this key over, probably. Oh no. Just bring it over. Adjust the tangent so it's so it's still getting a bit faster. <clears throat> so really if we look at the AE reference, about we're a little bit late on the slowdown. So it should slow down probably, if we look at the spacing. <clears throat> so if so, this is where we can actually visualize spacing. So if I just grab my grease pencil tool and just draw a line on each frame. Sometimes you won't see changes on frames. This is where the frame rate is different in the footage to what we're working in our scene. So like if I just come through. And all I'm doing is drawing a line. <clears throat> if I get my, I've lost my pen. Um, Oh, there we go. Let's go. No. I'm really about to do it with my mouse because my pen hasn't been aligned and that takes time and yeah. Okay, so we've got our grease pencil there, um, showing the distance it's jumping. Let's keep going with this.
and that's where you can see now the spacing has really slowed down. Just come up. It's gonna mess up all my sp I <laughs> I generally if you're doing drawing over your reference like this, do it from a static camera. <clears throat> so you can see like the actual changes. Because if I go back through this now, you can see my line has moved. So you can see at the end here, the spacing is getting closer together and it's further apart at the beginning. So that further apart should be, so it's going, probably can change this to be more like this. <clears throat> and basically what this is doing is saying, right, it's actually going faster out of this <clears throat> and then slowing down. Okay, and it should still be, if we look at ours in, in comparison, ours isn't moving enough still at the end here. So on this last key here, let's just move that over one frame so it's the very last frame. And we'll keep that going because I mean it's pretty much all the way open here. Like that. And let's bring that down. Probably bring that over a bit and just pull this curve out so it slows into it a bit more. There we go. Let's have a look at that now. Okay, and there we go. We've got our first door. Now we have our door animation finished, let's start looking at the finer details by adding some animation to the door handle. In the next video we're going to look through how to add the bounceable principle to the door handle as well for an extra layer of realism to the door. If you'd like to see the rest of this video series, make sure you subscribe to the Patreon where you have exclusive access to the videos before anyone else has any assets for this project. A massive thank you to our subscribers and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.